Okay, so let's let's kick off. Uh, welcome everybody, and we're going to look today. Today, uh, we're going to look at situation where you failed SBL exam, and and what should you do? What should you do in terms of how are you going to uh, overcome the failure? And how are you going to get better and pass SBL next time you take the SBL examination? So the first thing is, there's a contact list here. You can take your phone and scan it. If you don't already have my details, this is the contact list. Um, you can just scan that up. Also put it at the end if you miss it. But if you, if you want to take those a scan now, you can quickly take a scan. So you always know where to contact me. Or if you can't scan, if you don't have a scanner, just go to sblguru.com and you will have the same link as well okay so the first thing that i often get asked about in the exam is should i i failed my exam i got 47 i got 48 i got 49 should i go for an exam review i would say generally you should not go for an examination review if you think it's going to change your mark right so it's not a remarking Exam review is not a remarking of the exam. So you cannot get a fail and then suddenly becomes a pass if you go for an examination review. That's not the purpose of an exam review. The purpose of an exam review is to give you some feedback on your performance, but it's not a remarking exercise. So don't waste your money if you think it's going to change the mark. I have never, ever, ever, ever known anybody whose mark has changed because of an examination review. So if you want to get some feedback, you can do it. It's a relatively expensive thing to do. You could probably pay for a revision course by the time you've done it, but don't expect it to change your mark. And it's I've never known anybody's mark to change as a result of an examination review. So generally, in the words of Amy Winehouse, no, 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 don't bother with it. Save your money and spend it on something else like uh, some good notes or a good revision course. Now, when you fail your exam, you often feel very, very sad, right? You're feeling, oh, you know, you're absolutely gutted and, and you feel very depressed and you feel you should have passed. But I think what you think success is all about is a straight line. Here I am, I'm going to pass every single examination and I'm going to qualify as quickly as possible. But actually what happens in real life is sometimes it's going to be not a straight line. You're going to go up and you're going to go down. So don't always think that success is always something linear. Quite often, people are going to fail and learn and learn from their mistakes. So don't be too down on yourself. Don't beat yourself up. 50% of people fail the SBL exam. 50%. So half the people who take the exam, it's actually 52 was the most recent pass rate. But roughly half the people who fail the exam, uh, 48 out of 100 people fail the exam. So many, many, many people fail the SBL examination. So if you failed, you, you're, in a, you're in a really good amount of company there. It's very common to fail the SBL exam. And SBL, it is the most underestimated examination. It's very underestimated. So don't always expect your success to be a straight line. Same in your career. It doesn't always go in a straight line. Sometimes it can go in different directions. So very, very, very few students go through the entire ACC exam without failing one paper. It's probably around about 5% of students who go through the entire exam without failing a single paper. So most people fail at least once. Some people fail multiple times. My colleague uh, um, who teaches AAA, Ben, one of his students had failed the examination 25 times before they passed the examination. So, you know, uh, don't be like that. Don't copy that person. But most people fail the exams who do ACCA. So 95% normally fail at least one paper. So please take that into account. Don't feel like too downhearted if you failed. Just think about what you're going to do to get yourself back on track and to pass the exam next time. And that is the goal. So um, the question is, should you resit? The exam of course you should resit don't give up your acca but when should you resit the examination should you do it straight away so if you fail in march should you straight away do it in june or should you wait until september well i always ask students if they ask me when should 
they reset the exam. I always, I always like to look at what score they achieved in the examination. So if you got like 41 to 49, really, I think you should reset straight away. If you got less than 40, less than 40, I think you should consider very carefully, right? Because if you've got less than 40, it seems like your technical knowledge may be a little bit weak and it, you may benefit from a longer period of study. If you're getting in the 40s, then probably you've got some issues with your examination technique, but your technical knowledge is normally pretty strong. But you maybe need help with professional marks, answering the question or examination technique. So if you really got into in the 30s, anything in the 30s, I would seriously reconsider whether you might need more time. If you got in the 40s, probably it's a good idea. It's still relatively fresh in your mind. It's probably a good idea to go for the go for it straight away. But make sure you take action to avoid failing a second time. So we try, we fail, and we ultimately, you know, through the failure, we're going to lead to success. And if you keep going with ACCA, ACCA is really a test of perseverance. It's all about perseverance in the future. So you're going to fail examinations, but you've got to keep going. You've got to keep going and you will get there eventually. So don't worry about this cycle. It's very, very common. But one thing I will say to you, right, if you are retaking SBL. You're not doing it for the first time. You're doing it for the second time. Something needs to change in the future. You need to change how you do something. So you need to change. I just put here, if nothing changes, nothing changes. So if you prepare in exactly the same way, it's likely that you will fail again. So Einstein said insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. So if you prepare in the same way, it's very likely you might not make it a second time in the examination. So what you should do is try to do something differently. Prepare differently for your examination. So let's think for a second. Let's have a little bit of a think about why do people fail SBL. Some people fail because really they didn't put in the hours, right? They didn't give it the respect it deserves. And I've seen many things on Reddit forums where they say, Oh, you can pass the exam with just two weeks work. You can pass SBL. I think very unlikely you're going to be able to do that. It is underestimated. It's got a similar pass rate to SBR. So you've got to put in quite a bit of work to get through SBL. It's not an easy exam. It's of a similar standard to SBR. So treat it with a bit of respect and you've got to put in the hours. Uh, so not only did you not work hard enough, maybe you've worked hard enough, but you're doing it in the wrong way. You were not doing or preparing in the right way. And, and we'll talk about it a bit later on, but maybe you were just reading the textbook. That's how you prepared for the exam. You didn't really do any mock exams. You didn't really do it much question practice. So it's all about preparing in the correct way. Uh, people can work very hard, do lots of hours, but they're not preparing in, a, in an effective and an efficient way. Keys, one of the key reasons why people fail is application skills, right? So every paragraph you write is either going to be zero, one, or two marks. And to get that second mark is really about applying to the case, doing your say why, explain your point, link it to the story, and link it to the case. And that is what will turn a 40 marks into a, into a 50 marks. One of my students uh, who I had on the last course in March, she failed the exam four times. I taught her how to apply in the exam, build the application skills. She went from 44 and she scored 65, having previously failed four times in the exam because she built and understood that application is the key to success. People who fail and get 40, generally their application is quite weak. The other thing that's quite weak for students who get in the 40s is generally they don't have a good understanding of how professional marks are, are given in the examination. So it's something we do a lot on the revision course is we look at how we get professional marks. How do we maximize our professional marks? So maybe if you failed your exam, one or more or a combination of these things is wrong. If you've got any questions, please ask me as we go along. I don't mind asking as we go along. So if you've got any questions, don't hesitate to ask them as we go along. 
So the important thing is if you fail, success is always going to come from learning from your mistakes. You've got to learn from your mistakes in the examination. So don't make the same mistakes. Try and learn and try and have some reflection as to why you didn't make it. What was the reason? Which one of those four things did you go wrong on? If we look at those four things, have a bit of reflection. Think about which one applies to you or whether more than one might apply to you. Have a bit of reflection because ultimately, if we make a mistake, we're only going to be successful if we learn from those mistakes. So change your approach. I said if nothing changes, then nothing changes in the exam. So if you're going to work and pass, you cannot do the same level of effort. You're going to need more commitment. You're going to have to work harder to pass this time than you worked last time. More effort, more effort into the exam, more effort on learning how to apply, more effort on professional marks, and try and do better and different preparation to what you did before. Try and do things differently. I'll give you some tips about how you can potentially prepare better for the exam. The first thing is discipline, right? I think we've got about six weeks to go before the examination, slightly longer than six weeks. It's going to be like a week on, six weeks on Tuesday. So discipline is very important, right? I always say try to do something every single day for the exam. Try to do something. Now, I've got a, a podcast, so I said to people, if you're sick of doing question practice, just, just take a walk and listen to one of my podcasts. And if, if all you do is listen to 20 minutes of podcasts about the SBL exam, that could be really helpful to you. It takes you away from the screen, gives you a bit of a break, you have a bit of exercise. So get your headphones, subscribe to the podcast and listen to the podcast. It will make, it will make a, a, big, a big change uh, for your life. So you need to like a variety of things. Don't just do the same thing. Try and get and build a variety. But the most important thing is to develop that study habit, that discipline. So try and do something every day. And that, that could be just one question. It could be just one practice. It could be just uh, listening to a podcast or, or writing an answer plan, but just do something every day. So no one's going to be 100% every day and that's okay. You're not going to be some days you might have a great day, a weekend when you can you absolutely do like four or five hours and commit to it. But most people are not going to be like that every day and you can't do it every day. But try to have consistency of your habits on a daily basis. Never go two days breaking a habit. Ideally, every day, if you break one, make sure you don't do two consecutive days of breaking your habit. And think about why people fail. So we talked about not hard enough, not doing the right preparation, the application and weak acquisition of professional marks. So let's go through how to address some of these areas in the exam. So let me ask you, how many hours do you think you've got to put in from now to the exam? How many hours do you think? Let me ask you, just tell me in the chat, how many hours do you think you've got to put in to gain the professional marks in the examination? How many hours do you think you've got to put in to gain those marks? What do you think? Jones, what do you think? How many hours do you think we've got to go through to gain to gain a pass in SBL? What do you think the level of commitment is? Any idea? Ada, what do you think? Any idea about you? how many hours do you think? Have a guess. If you don't know, have a guess, right? Have a guess. Uh, uh, what, what I can say, the, the last month should be the fully uh, focus on the past papers Yeah. and work on the uh, SB platform. Yeah. Uh, because I, also, I, I got 47. Yeah. So the only thing that I couldn't finish the exam, so... I think the time is the critical thing. Timing is very, very important, right? Timing is very, very important. Very much, yeah. I can say, because I, I and I recognized in last two weeks ago, I can say. Yeah. Uh, and <laughs> because I I work with Kaplan. Yeah. And uh, the from the mocks, I really 84 marks or out yeah. of 100. But the thing is, I just did it in the they say six hours time blah 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 yeah so exactly you've got to, you've like, got to be strict with yourself right 
Um, we can all pass the exam if it takes five hours to do, right? So <laughs> we, we can do that. So I think roughly a minimum of about 50 hours between now and the examination, right? And how you spread that out is up to you, but make sure it's worked effectively, right? And, and you know, you've got to be committed to that. It's, it's like an hour a day is maybe not enough uh, to do your examination, but try and hit at least 50 hours of work and, and make that very effective work as well. Not, not reading the textbook, but make it very effective. So try and find somebody else who's doing the exam with you so you can actually have a study buddy as like a pro tip. So if you're both working, it, you can help to motivate each other. You know, you can go, go to the library together and study together. It's like if that person's not leaving, you're not leaving, and you can maybe do a, a few extra hours. If you can find somebody else doing the exam, can kind of support each other is a good way to build your commitment and build your hours. Um, get some good revision notes if you can, and there's like various sources of those revision notes. But one thing I would say is if you've got the, the Kaplan textbook or the BPP textbook, now is not the time to start reading it, right? It's not going to help you to pass the examination. It's too much. Find something that's summarized, summarized notes for you. So you want to find something right now with six weeks to go. Reading the manual is not going to help you. You need something that is going to be a summary of the syllabus, right? So whatever that is, there's various products in the market. I give all my students mind maps, which is like the whole syllabus into 35 pages, right? So everything goes into the mind maps. So try and get some good notes that are summarized. Summarize. Now you can do it yourself, but there's lots of products on the market that provide some summary notes for you. Try and get those summary notes because right now you don't be reading, you want to be practicing more, more questions. So SBL is not a knowledge-based exam. Knowledge is not enough to pass the examination. What it is about is about application. It's about applying in the examination. So too many students, they kind of memorize the knowledge but they tend to be weak in application skills. So, so need to build those application skills in the exam. So I think the most important thing as we move towards the revision phase is practice those exam questions and hit as many past paper SBL questions as you can. Now, the key about practicing past paper questions, <coughs> excuse me, look at the wording of those questions. Understanding the wording is very important and learn to apply. Look at how the examiner lays out their answer and how they apply. Now, if we're going to look at past paper question, don't just read the answers, right? When you've got past paper questions, don't just read the answers because it, it will tell you the answer. The examiner's answers are normally really long and they're quite off-putting. So try to read the examiner's reports because examiner's reports will tell you the mistakes that are made by students. Read those examiner's reports. They're the main mistakes that are made by the students. So look for that. Time management, you talked about it before, right? So in the examination, it's very important when you do anything of a practice question is you must do it in the exam timing. So in the exam timing, what I normally say to students is when we get those post scene material for the examination, we're normally looking at something like 45 minutes planning time and then 1.5 minutes per mark. So that's roughly what you're going to be doing in your examination. So I'll say it again, 45 minutes planning time and then 1.5 minutes per mark. So a 10 mark question, you can only spend 15 minutes on it. 20 mark question, you're looking at around about 30 minutes. This is the way to plan your answer so you do not run out of time in the examination. So 20 mark question, how many minutes do you think you would spend on a 20 mark question? Well, assuming you've, you've read the case study already, if you've read the case study, done your planning, it's going to be just 30 minutes of writing time, 30 minutes of writing time. So that's, if you do it that way, and normally when I train people on this, you must practice doing questions under time pressure because a lot of smart people, a lot of clever people, 
they fail the exam because they have poor time management skills in the exam. They don't have good time management skills. So you need to, to practice the discipline of answering the question in the time. Try to get feedback on your work. It's quite tough to mark to mark the examination yourself. So try to get feedback on your answer. Uh, now, you can look at the examiner's reports, can give you some feedback because that highlights the mistakes. But if you're working with a study buddy, try to mark each other's homework. Try to mark each other's exam. Yeah, so find somebody to mark your work. That could be your family. It could be a friend. It could be your teacher. It could be your lecturer. Get feedback on your work because that is how you learn. It's quite difficult sometimes to mark things yourself. So those are the... Those are other kind of tips, like the basic tips is, is some ideas in which you can do things differently to how you did before, right? Timed questions, focus on the past paper questions, focus on application, focus on getting those professional marks in the examination, get those professional marks in the exam. So that's what we're looking for in the examination. Has anybody got any questions <coughs> about, about the exam or anything I've said? I have a question. Yeah, I don't. So, um, my plan actually to take the the in June to SBR because I already yeah. started. Anyway, so unfortunately, because of my plans, probably I uh, can't make it in September. If I can take the December, yeah, uh, which I can believe that I can refresh my memory. Yeah. Because, to be honest, I technically I worked so hard the last time. Yeah. Uh, is it possible to take your revision uh, package or revision for normal? December? Yes. Yeah. Um, revision for pack. Uh, I'm talking about because I would like to see the, this SBR result anyway. Yeah. So. Yeah. So, so uh, if you do take my course, there's, there's a couple of things, right? If you take it, um, if you take the platinum course and you fail okay. it. You will, you will get uh, a free course again, okay? So uh, you can take the December course and December revision. Yeah, it, it's possible to, to, to do it now. But the revision won't open until October, October okay, time. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, October time. That's so uh, it, definitely it's, I can, uh, the, it, the revision course can be up in December. Yeah, no problem. You can sign up now. Okay. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah. So I just quickly go through. I've got two things, uh, Ada, you can have a look at again. There's lots of free stuff, which is the podcast, the YouTube channel, uh, and um, things like that. So there's lots of free resources there you can get. If you want to get the free stuff, it's, it's in the link I mentioned earlier. So the podcast is all about how to apply the SBL. It's all about application of SBL theories into a real life company. We've just done one about Taylor Swift, right? So um, the podcast, the YouTube channel, lots of good resources there for you. And it's all free of charge as well. For the revision course, there are sort of things I've got. There's the four day boot camp and the revision core. The difference between the four-day boot camp and the revision core is on the four-day boot camp, you will get your uh, live sessions. So you're going to get live sessions, but you will also get your answer can be sat on the practice platform and marked. So the revision core is slightly cheaper, but you don't get to the, you don't get the marking, uh, and you don't sit your exam on the practice platform. Mock course is just two mock exams based on the pre-scene. One is marked and one is unmarked, but they're both based on the pre-scene material. So it gives you an insight as to what is going to come on the exam. If you're on revision core or boot camp, you automatically get the two mocks anyway. It will automatically happen for you. So boot camp is intensive question practice, <coughs> one and a half practice mocks on the practice platform with detailed feedback. We've got the marked mock also based on the pre-scene with detailed feedback. You'll also get another unmarked mock as well. So it's very, 
I call it four day boot camp, very intensive way to prepare for the exam, but it also includes the detailed review of the pre scene case, plus it will include the marked mark based on the pre scene and a second mark mock on the pre scene, which is unmarked as well. So that is the kind of uh, a great product for revision. The revision core is exactly the same thing. You get the same material, but without the live sessions and without the marking and without the practice platform. Okay. So a mock course is one where if you've already done a revision course and you think, I just need a, a mock exam based on the pre-scene, it's basically going to have two mock exams based on the pre-scene, one on the practice platform and another one which is not on the practice platform. Whichever course you do, you're always going to get 24-7 support. And we, we try to form a little study group so you get some feedback from other people. And you can have like study buddies automatically there for you to give you some moral support as you're studying. Okay. So if you want to get in touch with me, get any of the links or if you want my WhatsApp is also on there as well. If you can't, if you haven't got a scanner handy, just type in sblguru.com and you can get there. Taylor Swift Podcast. Thanks. Jones likes the Taylor Swift Podcast. Thank you. Show me some love. There's going to be some more podcasts coming up as well. So uh, we, we, we're going to keep on doing those Taylor Swift podcasts and the, uh, try to make it very genuine. We've got one about Google. We've got one about um, uh, Facebook. So it all tries to be organizations that you will have heard of. So, so that's what we're going to try and do as well. So if you've got any questions, send me a message. If you've got any questions about the course, please send me a message and we'll, we will then... I can answer your questions directly. Okay. So I know that um, Jones is already on the course. So we look forward to serving you and helping you to get through the examination, Jones. So main thing is put that commitment in, work super hard and we'll, we'll get you through that examination. Okay. I've got any final questions to come up. Uh, otherwise I will, I will go on, to, go on to the next webinar. Hi, Ada. Just as last question, maybe this four day boot camp. Yeah. Is, is it really a four day or? Uh... Uh, okay. So, so how it's, uh, okay. It's, uh, it's on demand. <coughs> okay. Excuse me. It's on demand. So it's not like, it's not live. You can mm -hmm. do it in your own time. Right. So but why it's called a four day boot camp is because I break every day down into morning, afternoon. So it, it's sort of split into morning before tea break afternoon before tea break, final, it's, it's every day into four sessions. So basically every day is around about six hours. So the, the boot camp, if you do all four days, because three and a half days is all about the question practice. The last half day, we look at the pre-scene material, detailed analysis of the pre-scene material, and then um, the mock exams, you've got to sit the mock exams. So it splits into four days, but how you how you plan those four days, you can sign up today and it can mm -hmm. be, you know, you can do those four days in one weekend, you know, if you want to, if you really want, uh, you know, uh, it's going to be a very intensive weekend. It'll be a tw two 12 hour days. You can complete the entire course, but it's the idea is it's flexible. You can do it in your own time or when you want to do it. Does that answer your question? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. So it's not, it's not fixed times at all. The only fixed and times we've got are for the, the pre-scene review will be at a fixed time and the mock uh -huh. exams will be at a fixed time as well because the practice platform is like, it's difficult to open. So it's like quite tricky to... Yeah, yes, yeah. I can imagine. And it's better to do uh, that in the timed in the timed exams. Yes. Uh, that the, um, is it available uh, in revision time as well? So... We yeah. Can, uh, yeah. So if you do okay. the if you do the full course, revision is automatically included in that. Or you can mm -hmm. you can sit it as a separate standalone course as well. So it's it's up to you, depending on what you need. Okay, understood. Thank you. Yeah. If you've got any question, just send me a WhatsApp. The WhatsApp yes, link. Yes. Is, WhatsApp is I, in I there. I will. I will hopefully concentrate on after June. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. Do that. So, just send me a message. Just, I'll I'll sort you out after June. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Are you okay, Jones? Have you got any questions?
I think we're good. So, uh, okay, just keep in touch, yeah? And uh, I will see you, uh, I'll see you all soon. I'll be in touch soon with everybody. Have a, have a good day. And if you missed anything, I'm going to put this on YouTube later. So, um, and I, you'll also get a copy of it. If, af, after this meeting ends, you'll get a link by email and you can watch it again if you've missed anything. Okay, thanks very much, everybody. Have a great day ahead. Thank you. Thank you.